Good evening, and thank you for joining tonight's Telephone Town Hall, hosted by the City of Commerce City. My name is Roger, and I'll be your moderator tonight as we talk with Mayor Pro Tem, Rennie Bullock, Councilman Andrew Amador, Councilman Steve Douglas, Councilwoman Crystal Elliott, and Councilman Jason McEldowney about the exciting things happening in Commerce City. Council members also want to get your input on some initiatives being considered and answer questions you have about what's happening in the city. Now, before I ask our panel to make some opening remarks, I want to tell you about the format for tonight's call. We want this to be very interactive, so if you'd like to ask City Council a question, press star 3 on your keypad and you'll be transferred to an operator who will take down some basic information. Once the operator notes your information, you'll be returned to the meeting and can listen to the conversation until you're called upon. So press star 3 on your keypad to join in our discussion and ask a question of our panel. Since we have a variety of topics to cover tonight and our panel would like to take as many of your questions as possible, we will limit each participant to one question. If you're called upon, I'll ask you to repeat your question for our live audience. We'll also be asking several polling questions during the call, and I'll explain that process to you in a few minutes. So now I'd like to turn the call over to Mayor Pro Tem Renny Bullock uh, for some opening remarks. Councilman Mayor, go ahead. Welcome to the City Council's second town hall meeting. We are using this technology as another way to connect with our residents. In June of this year, more than 650 community members attended a similar meeting. And because of your feedback, City Council has budgeted for six town hall meetings in 2016. Our vision for Commerce City is a quality community for a lifetime. Tonight, we want to hear what the issues or concerns are on your mind, as well as talk about several new projects that are underway. So please press star three if you have any question or comment. All right, uh, thank you. Let's uh, go again. Well, again, let me just remind you, if you have a comment or question for the City Council, please press star three, and we'll get you in the queue. Next, we have Jason McEldowney. Uh, Jason, before we get into answering specific questions, why don't you talk a little bit about what's happening in the city? <clears throat> Thanks, Roger. We've got a lot of exciting things going on right now in Commerce City. The biggest, I think, is uh, the progress that we're making on our voter-approved capital improvement program. All five of the projects <clears throat> promised to voters are in active states of development. Two of them actually were delivered this summer, uh, with all projects uh, delivering by January 1st of 2019. Just to highlight where we stand on each of them, the city opened the new water park, Paradise Island Pool, at Pioneer Park in July. Hopefully many of you have had a chance to try one of the three slides or the Lazy River. Frontera Neighborhood Park, located between Second Creek Elementary and Stewart Middle School, opened in August. Construction contracts are being bid out for the remaining two neighborhood parks in Turnberry and villages at Buffalo Run East. The Tower Road project should also be released for construction bids at the end of this year. And we've also started planning the programming needs for the new recreation center, located near Second Creek at 112th Avenue and Highway 2, <clears throat> as well as the expansion of the existing recreation center. That will allow us to procure an architect to start design work. All right, very good. Again, if you'd like to ask a question, press star 3 on your keypad. We'll get you in the queue. And we're going to start off with Cheryl today. Uh, Cheryl, go right ahead with your question. Um, so my my question is about the uh, safety of walking down um, Chambers Road from Heartland to the shopping center on 104th. Um, I've personally almost witnessed, I mean, I've personally witnessed um, several people almost getting hit, um, children included, um, on that stretch of road, and I'm just curious what's in the works of uh, improving that. Hi, Cheryl. <clears throat> this is Jason McEldowney, and, and you've touched on one of uh, our very most uh, concerning pieces of, of roadway in the Northern Range. Um, we have a project that was uh, aimed at being delivered this year, or this uh, part of the improvement process or the improvement projects rather this year. There was a delay in that project because of 
some additional design considerations. Um, we've literally talked about this over the last several weeks with our public works department who are continuing to look at alternatives on how best to improve that section in advance of the ultimate widening of Chambers Road. So please know that this is a, a top priority and we are uh, looking at getting something in place as soon as we can. All right, very good. Again, star three if you'd like to ask a question. We're going to go next to Michelle. Go right ahead. Hi. Am I in? I I live you in are. the older part of Pemmer City on 65th Avenue. And I guess before we even bought our property, there was a water main break. And now our sidewalk slopes into the street. So in wintertime, icy weather, the water runs up over our sidewalk, which I know we're responsible for. And I try. Whoops, we had a. You disappeared. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened to our call. You want to address that, Councilman? Uh, this is Councilman Andrew Amador. And uh, to address the question about who is responsible for the street and the water main break that happened years ago, um, I would have to defer the question to our Commerce City Public Works. Uh, the phone number would be 303. 303- Two eight nine three six zero zero. I guess I didn't get the rest of the question, so it's a little hard to answer. But thank you. Great question. You can press three uh, star three again, and we can get you back in the uh, queue. Let's uh, go now to Councilman Douglas. Councilman, uh, what did the public uh, tell you about the programming needs for the recreation center? Uh, thank you, Roger. Um, earlier, we got uh, great input from more than 860 residents throughout our community on their desires for such um, new projects at the at the um, existing rec center and the new one to be built. Based on our our, our feedback from our June town hall uh, telephone call, we use online surveys as well as public meetings to get um, residents' input. And here's what does told us: uh, they would like fitness, uh, aquatics, child care spaces are really important for the new rec center. And it's also important to have community spaces and provide room that can accommodate many different activities as well. At the existing rec center, they also told us it's very important to provide a therapy pool, improving locker rooms and more fitness class areas, improving the flow of the facility. Uh, we also learned that many community members don't use the existing rec center, they don't use the existing rec center, relying on other rec center providers to serve our needs and you want lots of programming offerings different from what you uh, usually have for your busy schedule. So your feedback is very important. Uh, so we incorporate it into the request for proposal to find an architect who can design a building that meets our current needs and smartly, smartly plan for the future growth of our community. You can find this information on the programming online at www.c3gov.com slash qcu. I'm sorry, QCL. We appreciate your participation tonight. Looking forward uh, for your input. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Again, so the website is www.c3gov.com forward slash QCL. Learn lots of information that uh, we just went over there uh, for you, and uh, uh, it's a great resource for you. So we really appreciate your participation tonight and look forward to uh, your input. And in that vein, why don't we ask our first polling question. This question relates to your priorities that will help City Council determine policy areas for the year ahead. So to participate, just press the number on your keypad to register your vote. So here we go. What do you think is the number one issue facing Commerce City? Press 1 if you think quality of education is the number one priority. Press two, lack of retail businesses. Press three, blocked train crossings. And press four, community appearance. Again, one, quality of education. Two, lack of retail businesses. Three, blocked train crossings. And four, community appearance. Please record your vote now. And I'll share the results with you in just a moment. And while you're voting, we will take another question. And again, don't forget, 
If you have a question, please press star 3 on your keypad. Let's call on John next. John, go right ahead. Oh, good evening. I wanted to know what uh, the ballot question for 3C uh, was and what it will provide for our community. And taxes. And taxes. Hi, John. This is Jason McEldowney. The uh, the 3C question has been put on the ballot by the uh, district school district 27J. That is a construction bond or a, a school bond, if you will. <clears throat> the district is seeking roughly $250 million to authorize the construction of additional schools and repairs and an expansion of existing facilities to accommodate significant growth. That district has faced uh, roughly one, or just over 100% growth over the last 10 years compared to the next closest district, uh, Douglas County, at about 50%. Um, in terms of tax increase, based on the average uh, assessed value of homes across the district, it's about $33 a year on your property tax bill <clears throat> for uh, solving a capacity and safety uh, challenges across the district. Um, again, it's a school district initiative, but if you look at im27j.org, you will find a, a lengthy Q&A with links back to the school district website where those questions uh, require some further information. All right, thank you very much. So here are the results of our first survey question. The question was, what do you think is the number one issue facing Commerce City. 40% of you said lack of retail businesses. 29% said quality of education. And 22% said blocked train crossings. We appreciate your participation. And we're going to have some more questions later in the call. Why don't we now go to Councilwoman Elliott. Councilwoman, could you talk a little bit about what else is happening in Commerce City? Most definitely. We are seeing some exciting things on the economic development front. The Office Share, which is the city's first co-working space, opened its doors in Bell Creek last month. This is a great alternative for entre entrepreneurs and small businesses looking for a professional storefront without the overhead. Retail franchises owned by residents, such as Jimmy John's and Little Caesars, are making their home in our city. And a new fast casual restaurant, Dion's, based out, out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, is expanding to Colorado and has selected Commerce City as their third restaurant location. We do get lots of questions about the number of medical offices and fast food restaurants in the city. Our economic development experts remind us that these are good signs of things to come. Without more people and consistent daytime populations, we can't secure the type of retail or restaurants I know we all want. And the city's commitment to invest in roads and utilities will only help build out areas to be shovel-ready for companies, a challenge that has limited development in the past. You can learn about development activities in the city by receiving the monthly development report at c3gov.com backslash D-E-V-R-E-P-O-R-T, Development Report. I appreciate your participation tonight and look forward to your input. All right, thanks, Crystal. So why don't we take some more questions? And again, if you have a question for council members, uh, please press star three on your keypad. Frank is next. Thanks for holding and go right ahead. Yeah, uh, this is Frank. I just wanted to understand when the uh, planned construction was going to begin on Tower Road and the um, the off on ramp onto Pena Boulevard. I realize that we're already that there is some planning going in place, but I just wanted to know when the actual uh, I guess the graders and, and diggers were going to hit the ground and, and start widening that area. Hello, Frank. This is uh, Mayor Pro Temp Renee Bullock, and uh, that is in the design stage right now, and it's going to be released for bid later on this year with construction starting next year. And the Pena ramp is going to be phased in to the construction to maximize uh, all the construction costs and everything that goes along with it. Um, is that enough of an answer to uh, meet your question? All right, thank you. Let's go next to Marietta. Marietta, go right ahead. Marietta, you're live with our audience. Are you there? All right, we've lost Marietta. Let's go next to... Roger, you're up. Go right ahead. I, I, 
I didn't know if I misheard. Where, where is the new uh, rec center going to be built at with the location? Hi, Roger. This is a councilman, Steve Douglas. The new, rec, the new rec center is going to be located on 112th and Potomac. It's going to be in the northeast side right behind Pioneer Sand and Gravel. Do you know where the location is? Right off of Highway 2? All right. Right behind Highway 2. Thank you very much. Let's go next to Michael. Michael, go ahead. Um, yes, I've got a question. This is we've we've lived in the River Run subdivision for 11 years on the on the River Run West, and uh, an extremely common problem has been the trains that have been parking there, and they'll sit there eight, ten hours, and they don't move, and and sometimes they're there even longer, and sometimes you'll you'll get double trains, and then with the 104th Avenue, you know, with the Havana part closed off right now. That's not even an option. You have to try to go up to 120th with the rush hour traffic. Is there anything, you know, we've called the phone numbers listed on those on either side of the railroad tracks. We've called the Adams County non-emergency line. You know, we've, we've made all the different calls we're supposed to do, and it never seems to be, nothing has ever seemed to be getting resolved. Is there anything in the future, short term or long term, that, are, that you're looking at to solve this problem? Hi, Michael. This is Jason McEldowney, and you touched on one of the areas that this council talks about probably most frequently. It's it's up close and personal for all of us. Um, to try and answer your question in, in as short a form as possible, it is at the top of our list of concerns. Uh, one of the primary points that you've raised is who's going to do something, and right now the railroad's aren't going to do anything on their own. I, sh I should say that they have done something. They've added some facilities at the 112th crossing to enable them to decouple long stretches of cars if they're going to be present for a long period of time so that they can allow traffic to move. Again, if you find instances where that's not happening, please, please use those numbers and contact us and contact the train uh, the, the trains themselves so that they can be made aware of that. <clears throat> in terms of long term, we have got to introduce what we call grade separations at key intersections. Right now, 120th and roughly I-76, the trains can go underneath the road. The, the, probably the most uh, critical point to, that we want to address next would be Highway 85 and 120th to allow for a, a complete corridor without train conflict. <clears throat> Council actually talked just last night uh, in terms of setting priorities for the 2016 budget about what we can do to uh, speed the analysis of looking at other alternatives for corridors that we can also address grade separations on, um, but those will take some time. So please uh, reach out if you've got further questions on that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilman. Ruth, it's your turn. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, I have a couple questions. Um, we, I use, a group of us use the rec center all the time, and with the expansion of the old rec center, are they going to put in a family room so that these young boys that are five, six, seven, and eight are not in the women's dressing rooms with us? And the other question is, what are we going to do with these big trash containers we're using now? And I live in the south part of town that just sit in front of these houses all the time. It looks terrible. Uh, people don't pull them in. They just set them in front of the house when they do. Um, it looks worse than when we had trash bags, actually. Hi, Ruth. This is Councilwoman Crystal Elliott, and thank you so much for your question. And, and to answer that, absolutely, uh, this has definitely been taken into consideration, and it is a priority. Uh, so family locker rooms, wet locker rooms, and obviously the, uh, the separate uh, locker rooms for women are definitely going to be put in place uh, when the current rec center has been uh, going or going through the expansion. And then in answer to your second question, I'm going to refer you to our city website um, for more information. Um, and that would be, again, C, the number three, gov, G-O-V, dot com, backslash trash. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Why don't we take a break from our discussion and ask our second poll question. Again, to participate in the poll, use your telephone keypad to enter the number of your response. Our question has to do with city information. Later this year, City Council re will revisit discussions on whether backyard chickens should be allowed. What do you think? Press 1 for yes, the city should allow them. 
with certain restrictions. Press two for no, the city should keep chickens in agricultural areas. And three, press three if you're unsure and need more information before weighing in. So this is a chicken question. One for yes, the city should allow. Two for no, the city should not. And three, if you're unsure and still need more information uh, before you uh, make a final decision, please record your vote now. And I'll share the results with you in just a minute while you're voting. We're going to take Linda's question. Linda, go ahead. Hi, how's everybody? Uh, Renee, Steve, you know me. I've been a resident out here for 11 years before almost anything was here. Having said that, I'm a baby boomer and wanting to know, are there any plans for, like, senior development like Windsor Gardens or Heatheridge? I don't want to go back south. Is there any of that type of planning? Not so much Sunrise, but the Windsor Gardens or Heatheridge style senior living maintenance free. Hi, Linda. This is Renee Bullock. And uh, at this present time, some of the developers in the north and the south are considering um, some freestyle maintenance-free living for seniors. Um, we are actively encouraging them to do it, but that's all we can do with it is actively encourage it. Um, there are members on the um, housing authority that are looking to actually see if we can get some sites to put in uh, active living, freestyle maintenance living, uh, senior living. But uh, as of right now, we're in talks with different developers, but uh, until they actually come forward and they're serious, um, that's the most we can do. I hope that answers your question for you. All right. Thank you, uh, Councilman. Here are the results of our second polling question. Again, we uh, said later this year, City Council will revisit whether backyard chickens should be allowed. And we wanted to know what you think about that. 46% said no, the city should keep chickens in agricultural areas. 39% said yes, uh, allow the city should allow them with restrictions. So pretty close. Thank you very much for sharing your opinion. Uh, we uh, value it very much. And we'll have another question here in a few minutes. Why don't we go next to Jerry with your question. You're live. Go ahead. I've actually got two questions. One is on 68th or 60th Avenue, across from Kentucky Fried Chicken. There used to be a sign there telling that no trucks over 18 or 8,000 pounds and that they must turn right at Monaco. Now that sign has been taken down. There's no signs at all. So you got all sorts of tractors and trailers going eastbound on 60th Avenue. And where the island is at 60th and Olive, it really slows down traffic because they've got to take their time to go around there. And I don't understand why we took the sign down and why the sign couldn't say the only turn that trucks can make would be a right turn on um, Holly down to 56th Avenue and then out of the city. Okay, that's my first question. Can I go with my second one? Well, why don't we start there with uh, with that. Crystal, do you want to take that question? Certainly, Roger. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for your concern and your question regarding that intersection. Uh, so basically, what it, um, the information I'd like to provide to you is that we would, you know, the city does continually uh, perform traffic studies, and um, so within that area, we probably need some more information. But based on the information that you did provide, um, the city is in the process of working closely with our police department and public works on projects such as these. And so, uh, most definitely, I will forward your concern to. Um, to see to the appropriate departments to see what we can do to uh, to alleviate this concern. Thank you so much. Great questions. Again, if you have a question for our uh, panel, press star three. Kathy and Tia are standing by and would love to take your information down and get you in the queue. Let's go next to Connie. Your question. Go ahead. I want to thank um, Mayor Ford uh, for having uh, opened their policy and also Steve Douglas, our city councilman, for always uh, having an open-door policy. First, I want to thank you, too. And uh, my question, I have two and a half questions. The first one has to do with the uh, recreation center 
They never take into consideration uh, people with disabilities. They need to uh, get uh, people that are disabled involved. So when they're planning these uh, places, that they plan them with uh, knowing that they have to have certain kind of doors because uh, a lot of the buildings um, aren't up to the ADA code. That's one question. Second question, and it, this is um, piggyback off of each other. Um, I have been made aware that they're closing down our uh, social services on 72nd Avenue, and we have such a bad transportation issue, and uh, how are all these poor people and disabled people and elderly people going to get to uh, social services because we don't have very good transportation? And also, why don't they have a satellite building so these people, a lot of them walk over to 72nd because, first of all, they can't afford it. Second of all, there is uh, we have a lack of uh, transportation, and I want to know what you're going to do about it. I really would like to see a satellite office so that, um, uh, for okay. once, think of the people in Commerce City. Councilman, do you want to t take that? Absolutely. Thank you, Connie. I see we have a, an array of questions here, so let me try to capture them all. Uh, first of all, to answer your question about the accessibility issues that are could possibly happen over in the new rec center um, and the existing rec center, what I can tell you is that uh, all buildings that are new construction and buildings that have been constructed in the past uh, do have to meet accessibility standards for ADA and also ANSI 117 people with disabilities. Um, so we are actively uh, looking at a design, and we're actually we're not in the design phase yet, but we will definitely consider that in the new rec center and the remodel of the rec center. Um, I'm going to move into your uh, public transportation. Uh, what I can tell you is that um, the city does recognize the need for public transportation. Uh, as an example, the 104X line, which uh, got put into play about a year and a half ago, um, the city did put up some funds to initially start that route. Um, when that happened, it was just a part-time route. It was such a success that uh, it is now a full-time route, the 104X, and to keep moving forward and to springboard off of that, um, there is uh, in the works a new bus route coming off of the spur line um, at Central Park Boulevard. And so that new bus line will basically run down Central Park Boulevard. It will take you to Civic Center. It will take you to the new Boys and Girls Club. Um, it will have a stop to connect us to uh, the 88th service line. So the city does recognize the need for public transportation, and so I hope that answers your co your uh, questions. Thank you. For those of you just joining the call, good evening. My name's Roger, and I'm your moderator tonight as we talk with Commerce City City Council members. We've already talked about a wide variety of topics. Uh, you know, we've uh, from our voter-approved capital improvement programs to chickens. So we uh, hope that you'll continue to press star three and uh, ask a question of our uh, panel. Uh, when you press star three, you'll be transferred to an operator who will take down some basic information and get you in the queue. So one more time, a reminder, press star three to be transferred to an operator. Let's go back to questions, and we'll start with Dean. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, my question is, I live right across from the Boys and uh, Girls Club on 62nd and Holly, and I'm going to piggyback on the lack of enforcement of large uh, overweight trucks. There is signs from 60th uh, from uh, northbound on Holly that says no trucks over 8,000 pounds. I've seen several trucks go by, and there is no enforcement of overweight trucks. So I'd like to see that start uh, being enforced, and I believe that it would be a great revenue source for the city besides uh, not having the overweight trucks, at least around that Boys and Girls Club like it is now. Hello, Dean. This is uh, Mayor Pro Temp, Renee Bullock. And um, some of the uh, routes that you're speaking about are actually truck routes for delivery trucks 
that have to deliver to uh, different businesses over on 64th that uh, – get to access them from 60th Avenue. Uh, usually we don't have them coming up 62nd in front of the Boys and Girls Club, but they do get to go up 60th and turn left down Holly and proceed down to 64th. So um, I'm hoping that um, this answers your question because that is a designated truck route for delivery trucks that are on direct delivery routes. Thank you. Dana is next. Go right ahead with your question. Yeah, my question is the same question I've been asking for a number of years. I've called in on these. I've been out here in the reunion area for almost 13 years when there was nothing out here. Um, the big concern I have is I think you guys are doing a good job with a lot of things. So don't take this the wrong way. But the highway traffic at 104th and Highway 85, when the train is there, this this has been unresolved for years. I went to a city council meeting. I was told that the railroad's fined $500, which whoop de do railroad doesn't care about 500 bucks. What's going to be done to actually resolve this? Because this can cause a lot of us our jobs. When you're sitting there for 45 minutes waiting for a damn train to get out of the way, and you're on a point system at work and this, that, and the other. I mean, literally, people can lose their jobs, lose their homes because of this. And nothing has been done in the 13 years I've been out here. Dana, thanks. This is Jason McEldowney. Um, and I, you may have joined. Uh, I made a couple comments on this earlier, but let me uh, make sure I address them so that you, you're current. This subject of trains and conflict with our uh, motorists is a, is a critical concern, not only for folks like yourself who uh, are on their way to work or home, uh, but for the movement of goods and services through our community. Uh, the trains are both a blessing and a curse. Um, we have, as a top priority for council, addressing the train car conflict. The challenge is it is an exceptionally expensive proposition to create what we call a grade separation, allowing cars to go over the tracks. We are actively looking in our council priorities at how to make that happen at Highway 85 and 120th so that that corridor can be free of trains for its entire length. We acknowledge that we need to find other critical intersections in the city that we can have that same uh, solution in place. That is not going to be an immediate fix because of the cost. Um, we continue to work aggressively with the railroads to find ways to uh, balance the train car conflict. Um, ideally, and I literally just got caught in the, the train traffic that you're describing um, at 85 and 104th on Saturday morning. Um, we need to get the construction complete, which is actually ahead of schedule, and hopefully that will help um, provide some interim improvements to, to allow that traffic to flow more easily. But this is an item that you can be assured that Council will continue to keep on the top of their list and explore all options to help address it. Thank you so much. Jason Wall, uh, we've got you talking about priorities of City Council. Why don't you talk about some of the other things uh, Council is working on in uh, Commerce City? Thanks, Roger. Um, we've touched on some of these, but let's let's talk these through because these are really these are really critically important. First, I want to touch on Highway Two. The expansion of Highway Two uh, is a top priority for our city. Has been since well before I joined the city council eight years ago. Um, we were able to secure a grant with the help of CDOT, uh, and as a result, we'll be able to um, take this roadway over as a city corridor. That roadway is currently in the design phase. Construction should begin next year to widen the road to four lanes, including bike and pedestrian improvements between 72nd Avenue and I-76. So that's the entire segment from 72nd Avenue to I-76. We just touched on the fact that having railroad access in the community is great for uh, economic development, but it's not great for traveling through the community. As I said, we're going to continue to work with the railroads and the federal government to seek relief, but it's not an easy fix. Uh, as I've said, keep calling the railroads when blockages occur. Um, let us know uh, what you're seeing. City Council will be meeting with our regional administrator for the Federal Railroad Administration in the next month to, to explore legislative solutions that might be possible to help uh, in the nearer term. The tower ramp, something that I know 
many, many in the community are eagerly awaiting. Uh, that's the ramp from Tower Road onto Pena. Very hot topic for us. Uh, the city reached the agreement, agreement last year with the airport and the federal government to add the ramp, and we're working in partnership to complete the environmental and design activities surround, or, uh, associated with that project. So please look for more activity in the, in the next year on that, and know that that's going to be carefully coordinated uh, with the tower constru construction of Tower Road. Finally, the redevelopment of the former Mile High Greyhound Park is also a priority for the council. We hope to reach an agreement by the end of this year with the master developers so that we can begin to see development begin in earnest. There are some exciting opportunities on that site. Tonight, again, Council wants to hear from you, our residents. What questions do you have about these and other projects happening in our community? Remember, press star 3 to join the conversation. All right, thanks, Jason. So again, we'll get back to taking some questions. Again, if uh, you'd like to ask a question, press star 3. Let's call upon Beth next. Go right ahead. Um, yes, I was just wondering if there's anything on the table as far as the development of uh, the Murray Corn Maze land off, off of 112th and Highway 85. There's kind of been somewhat of a rumor that um, someone's looking at it to possibly put in like storage units, like uh, that type of thing, and I was just curious if anything else is out there public yet. Thank you, Beth. This is uh, Andrew Amador. Um, what I can tell you is that... Uh, the private sector drives uh, what projects go into a specific site. What I would have to do, because I'm not fully up to speed, would, would be to uh, get you with our economic development divisions, and they would be able to give you more specifics on the specific site that you're asking. If you have a pen, the phone number is 303-289-3600. Uh, the city does recognize the need for sit-down restaurants and commercial retail spaces and other amenities. However, that is driven by the private sector. Um, so thank you for your call. Lisa, you're next. Go right ahead. Um, I was. We live out in the Buffalo Run area. Well, that was my my bad, Lisa. Press star three again, and we'll get you back in the queue. I hit the wrong button. I apologize. Donna, we're going to let you go, and then we'll get Lisa back on. Yeah. Um, I was wondering why you don't consider putting a fairgrounds with an arena and maybe a little racetrack for the kids out at the arsenal so they have a place to ride their horses. There's a lot of horsemen in town, and they would really like to enjoy their livestock, and I think it would be an excellent education for the children and the teenagers and get them away from the concerts and the booze and the drugs. Thank you, Donna. This is uh, Mayor Pro Tem Renee Bullock. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that there is a lot of programming for youth out at the Rocky Mountain Arsenal uh, Wildlife Refuge. They have uh, Trails for youth. Uh, we have wildlife uh, exhibits. Uh, they just opened the new Blackfoot ferret exhibit, and we released 30 Blackfoot ferret on the uh, Rocky Mountain Arsenal. Um, they uh, have uh, different um, events during the weekends and during different times of year, fishing frenzy, and uh, items like that. But first of all, the Rocky Mountain Wildlife Refuge is a federally uh, owned facility controlled by Fish and Wildlife, uh, which is a federal government. We have no control over their programming. So we as a city could not go in there and do anything like you suggested, putting in horse trails or any um, uh I, uh, events like that because that is wholly owned by the federal government. Um, I hope this answers your question. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Lisa, fat fingers, I apologize. You're back on. Go ahead. Um, I just have a quick question. We live out at the Buffalo Run area, and they're doing new construction at the neighborhood next door to us. And we're wondering why there's not a requirement for water trucks to be used during the construction. Um, to cut down on the dust that's being stirred up. 
It's got it. I, I know for a fact that EPA rules state that you have to have a water truck to cut down on the dust. And I'm just wondering what the city is going to do to enforce that. Thank you, Lisa. This is Councilman Steve Douglas. That's a that's a good question. We do a lot of construction over the last 10, <clears throat> 10 12 years here, and do and as far as the dust and everything, I, I know um, you know it's there. Uh, there's EPA emission rate of 1.2 tons per acre per month of active construction, and so as far as uh, maintaining that dust, yes, they're supposed to be out when they make a mound of dirt, uh, sprinkle water on that. That's one of the ways. Another. Uh, Another alternative is for them to do a deep tilling, which brings up large clots of uh, dirt to cover the dust. But the best thing you can do is uh, contact our uh, public works department at 303-289-3600 and uh, give, uh, give them the, a location and they'll come out because there are certain guidelines that uh, the contractors have to follow. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Why don't we take a break and ask our final polling question. Uh, again, just par to participate, just press your keypad and register your vote. The city offers numerous ways to get engaged in government activities, from serving on boards and commissions, hosting public meetings, and online survey surveys. Recognizing individuals are busy, what tool would you would be useful to increase your participation? Again, what tool would be useful to increase your participation with the city. Press 1 if, uh, for offer more online ways to engage. Press 2 for provide child care. Press 3 for vary meeting locations and times. And press 4 if uh, there's nothing they can do to increase your participation. So again, number 1, offer more online ways to engage. 2, provide child care. Three, vary the meeting locations and times, and four, nothing. Please record your vote now. And as always, we'll share the results with you in just a moment. While you're voting, we'll take another question. And let's uh, I'll remind you one last time to press star three if you have a question. Next up is Mike. Thanks for being, your patience. Go right ahead. So my question really has to do with uh, what specific um, activities or, or incentives is the city providing to independent restaurants, bars, et cetera, to develop properties out in the reunion area. We, we are at chain death out here. We don't need more chains. We want independent full-service restaurants. Um, there's some concern about a rumor floating around that the city has made um, the licensing of alcohol uh, difficult and expensive uh, at a premium rate. Uh, trying to protect the Buffalo Run golf course business. Mike, thanks so much for the question. It's one that's uh, near and dear to all of us, especially those of us living in the Northern Range. Um, this is Jason McEldowney, by the way. Um, first, let me speak to the uh, the question of alcohol and, and anti-competitive behavior with regard to Buffalo Run Golf Course. Absolutely not true. Um, one of the top priorities in terms of economic development, uh, aside from job growth, is bringing in those services both in the northern range and in the core part of town. And so uh, that brings us to the question of incentives. Um, clearly, incentives are necessary to bring early adopters into the community, and we have proven over and over again where we've been able to get folks to commit to coming into the northern range that they're successful. King Supers was an early adopter and successful, and we've seen the same true for, for others. The difficulty with sit-down restaurants, quite frankly, and we've made this a regular conversation um, with industry is the, the, the point at which it makes sense for them financially. And again, we don't control that. From an incentives perspective, we offer tax uh, rebates, uh, forgiveness of sales tax, uh, we permit uh, refunds, et cetera. So there are a range of things that we do to make it possible, including incentivizing with water rights, et cetera. So please know that as uh, a restaurateur, a, a, a major sit-down, as you cite, comes in, we are ready to be at the table, and our economic development team is out there seeking those opportunities aggressively. So um, I hope that helps clarify. Uh, take care, and thanks for calling in. All right. Thank you, Councilman. Here are the results of our survey, our final survey question. Again, we asked what tools 
could increase your participation in local government. 53% said offer more online ways to engage, and 26% said vary the meeting times and locations. I know all of the council members appreciate your input, and, uh, and thank you for participating in uh, the surveys. Let's take another question from Paula. Paula, go ahead. Thank you. Um, my question is, um, I'm, well, first of all, let me say I'm excited that Tower Road is going to be widened. Uh, but my question is, what are the plans for managing the traffic flow uh, on Tower Road during construction? Because uh, as you, I'm sure, know now, it's bad. And uh, adding construction will make it a nightmare. So just wondering if uh, nighttime work had possibly been considered. Yes, thank you, Paula. This is Councilman Andrew Amador. Uh, the city's goal is to maintain traffic flow for any road construction project. Um, what I can tell you is that we are anticipating uh, possibly night cl lane closures to maintain traffic flow. Um, uh, however, we are not in a position just yet to set the final uh, designed and what that looks like, but once we know what that looks like, we will definitely share on the Commerce City website, www.c3.gov. Thank you. Councilman Amador Wall, I've got you on the uh, line. Uh, Commerce City is continually looking for better ways to engage residents and deliver services. We've heard a lot about that tonight. Uh, can you talk some more? Absolutely. Uh, Roger, uh, we're wrapping up our 2016 budget process and we found some key opportunities to improve how the city can deliver service that residents expect. For example, this Saturday, a free yard waste drop-off event will be held at 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Civic Center. Based on residents' input during our new trash service rollout, we expect to host seasonal yard waste events in 2016 as well. Also, Council approved additional funding in 2016 to equip our police officers with body cameras. Not only does this help protect our employees, it also aligns with improvement that is underway in our police department to improve the community safety and more responsive to our community's needs. I can also tell you that a new RTD bus service will connect from the new east rail line to Civic Center and the Sun, Sun Corps Boys and Girls Club next year thanks to city funds and federal grants. We also know there's a lack of market rate affordable housing, which is an issue. City Council has commissioned a study in partnership with the Housing Authority to assess, to assess existing housing within the city and improve opportunities for affordable housing for individuals of all ages. You can learn more about what's happening in the city on our website, www.c3gov.com, or by contacting City Council. All of our cell phones are located on the website along with our emails. We're here to serve you and provide programs and services to residents that we expect. Thanks, Councilman. Let's uh, take a call from a uh, question from Maria. Go right ahead. Hello. Um, so my question is really to piggyback on a previous question that was asked. I didn't um, hear a, a clear answer to it. And this was regarding the Adams County Social Service Building moving. My understanding is that it is uh, all the services are moving to 120th and Huron. And um, the concern that was raised by um, the person previous was that a lot of the folks do not have transportation as it is, much less to be able to travel up there to get um, the services like apply for food assistance, Medicaid, um, child care assistance. All those programs are going to be moving. Her question was, um, is there you know, a satellite office that could be um, provided for the Commerce City residents? So my question would be, is um, that something that the City Council could look at working with um, the folks in Adams County? Because I know that's an Adams County bill building and it's an Adams County program, but um, the need is still here in Commerce City, and once it moves, I think it's going to um, create a lot of havoc for our, our families that truly desperately need those programs. 
Hi, Maria. This is Councilwoman Crystal Elliott, and thank you so much for your, your call. And I do understand the concern. And um, just to clarify, yes, um, the uh, social services uh, offices are moving to Westminster. Uh, but in regards to a satellite office, well, I think that's a great idea. I would, um, yeah, I don't have an immediate answer for you, but I would like to to give you some information and also refer you to the uh, Adams County website uh, to kind of uh, do some research on on that as well. But um, I do have a contact of a person uh, who's the director of the social services uh, division. Um, the person's name is Chris Klein, K-L-I-N-E, and again, he's the director. Um, I have a phone number of 303-287-8831, um, but again, I'd invite you to visit the Adams County website, which is www.co.adams.co.us, and also invite you to call um, your county commissioner as well and voice your concern. Uh, but I hope this information is helpful to you, and I would like to see uh, you know this this program flourish um, and continue on providing the, uh, the the services that we need and the amenities for our residents. Thank you so much for your call. Thank you, Councilwoman. We're going to call on Lisa next. What's your question, Lynn? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, hi, hi. My name is Lynn, and I if you haven't already covered this on the call today. I was just curious to understand a little bit more about what has been approved or what is being considered in the guidelines for uh, recreational pot shops within Commerce City. Thank you, Lynn. This is uh, Mayor Pro Temp Renee Bullock. And uh, in um, January, we lifted our moratorium on marijuana and then we approved an ordinance for licensing and regulating where uh, any of the trade could be sold at in our city. At this present time, we have 17 letters of interest and three applications. And uh, we are moving forward to get through that. But we're also asking the voters in this November for a 5% approval of an excise tax to um, help with the uh, costs it takes to do the licensing and regulation and uh, enforcement of marijuana in our city. I hope that is enough, but if you do need, and it's not going into any neighborhoods, it's only in industrial uh, neighborhoods in our city. If you need any more information, you can go to c3gov.com slash marijuana or call the um, uh, city clerk's office at 303-289-3612 and ask for the city clerk's office. Okay, yeah, I hope that's enough information. Thank you. Okay, very good. Let's call on Sandra. Sandra, next. Go right ahead. Yes, thank you. Um, I was wondering with the new um, waste removal system we have now, um, how are um, the pickup of the leaves that, you know, the fall leaves when they all fall from the trees going to be handled because, you know, the volume is going to be too much for anybody to put in their trash cans. Um, and I know some of the other cities have, you know, special pickups where the people just, you know, bag them and, and put them out in front of their house and then on, a you know, assigned dates and stuff they come by and will pick up you know, the the leaves, you know, specifically just by themselves. Um, is Commerce City doing anything like that, or, or how are they going to handle it? That, <clears throat> Hi, John. This is Councilman Steve Douglas. That's a great question. Um, this Saturday, we're hosting a uh, yard waste as far as your leaves and green yard waste Um it's going to be up to Civic Center, located at 1887 East 60th Avenue, and that's this Saturday. And uh, as for the Commerce Center residents, all you have to make sure that you bring ID to show that you're a Commerce Center resident. Um, no business or private contracts are allowed, but uh, we're hosting this event over at the Civic Center for any extra leaves or green yard waste can be dropped off. There's also accessible uh, items for free as well, uh, extra glass uh, gas gas grass, a grass kipping, uh, tree limbs and uh, shrub trimming, no more than four feet in length, leaves, 
plant debris, weeds, flowers, sawdust, and garden material. Also, you can go to uh, c3gov.com slash trash and gives you a list of things that are acceptable and things that are not acceptable. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Councilman. We have just a couple minutes left. Renee, uh, do you have any closing remarks for us tonight? Thank you, Roger. And I want to again thank the participants for calling to, into tonight's town hall. I thought the discussion was very enlightening, and I hope they all found it informative. We appreciate all the input we received tonight, and if we didn't get to your question, you can leave a voice message at the end of the call. If you would like more information, information please visit our website at www.c3gov.com. And I'm going to repeat that again, www.c3gov.com. And again, I want to thank everybody that participated in this uh, night's town hall call. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. On behalf of city council members, uh, the entire uh, panel tonight, thank you again for joining us. We're sorry if we didn't get to your question, but as Renee mentioned, you can still leave us a message or a comment at the end of the call, so just stay on the line. We hope you have a very good evening.